Hello there, and are you all well today? <laughs> oh, I am so glad to hear that. And me, you ask? Never better. So, where are we off to today, you ask? Well, how does New York to Boston sound? Is that a good route? <laughs> Now, I actually had two requests for this route. The first came in from Kaimi Kaimietis, who said, a flight from KJFK in New York to KBOS Boston is a fun route and quite a short one. Hmm. You know, that's true. And it is a short flight being only 162 nautical miles between the two points. And that means there's more for me to do in the cockpit. The second request came in about three or four weeks ago from Flix Edgar, who wrote to say, Hey, Father Dane, I would love to see a flight from one of my home airports in New York City. LGA, that's LaGuardia, to Atlanta would be a good route or going anywhere out of LaGuardia or even JFK and have a great day. <laughs> Typical New York greeting that, isn't it? So I hope that you approve of the flight today out of the very busy and very important JFK Airport. Now, I've flown out of KJFK many times in the past. I've never piloted a plane in or out of JFK, but I've certainly flown as a passenger several times. I used to fly from JFK to Europe with Pan Am back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> a long time ago now. And then I flew a lot with a company called Luftleidier, or Icelandic Airlines as it was called. You know, we would stop at Reykjavik Airport for refueling en route. And if you decided to stay over in Iceland, and I did on several occasions, a visitor can enjoy steaming hot springs and the occasional volcano. But most of all, you could get to see the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. Now that's a sight you will never forget. But today we are heading in a different direction and with a different carrier, Delta Airlines. And we will follow the route of their flight 5603. If you go to Flight Aware and put in DL5603, it will bring up that route and show you the history of all the previous flights. Now, I've got two excellent sceneries installed in the simulator for this occasion. New York JFK Airport scenery is by Driswicky Design. I Hope I pronounced that correctly. If not, please forgive me. This scenery is very detailed indeed and even includes drifting snow, which at this time of year, that is entirely possible. I also have the very detailed representation of New York City, which we may see depending on the weather today. The other great scenery I have is for Boston, KBOS Airport. This scenery is designed and made by Fly Tampa, and it's very accurate and detailed indeed. You know, there are even animated people on the apron and birds flying around. By the way, did you know that these two cities were named after two old cities here in England? You know, by road, I am 83 miles from Boston and 45 miles from York. 
Many of the people in this area of England have settled into the USA over the centuries. But did you know that only 24 miles from me is where a group of those early settlers decided to book a passage on a ship bound for the New World named, just a minute, I'll think of it. Oh yes, it was called the Mayflower. <laughs> Have you heard of that ship? <laughs> Well, those early settlers are now well-known names in the USA. But, you know, originally they were all from a, around my part of England. William Bradford, William Brewster and John Carver among them. So, now if you're ready, it's time to go into pre-flight and check the route and have a look at the all-important weather before making our flight plan and assembling the flight charts we're going to need in Navigraph. So are you ready? I'll see you in flight preparation. Well, here we are looking in flight aware at Delta 5603. And here are the other two ways of designating this flight to search for it. This one is expected to depart in two hours and 53 minutes. It's supposedly departing from gate C63. We'll have a look and see where the C range is in just a moment. And it says it arrived at gate A7. So that's in the A terminal when we get there. Here's the flight route. JFK and the dotted line indicates the flight plan that it will be taking to go to Boston. These green splotches, of course, are some interesting weather patterns. And if you notice, this one is already over Boston. So we'll have to see if, what effect that's going to make on us. Over here, it says it's altitude of this particular flight is going to be 19,000 feet. Direct is 162 nautical miles. And this is the very simple route. Just one waypoint there. And then this, the, the Robock 3, that is the arrival star into Boston. Taxi time average is 10 minutes, it says, at New York, and 10 minutes or less at Boston. Right, so we know what the route is going to be, and we know that there's going to be a little bit of weather. So let's have a look and see where that C63 is likely to be. Now here I'm looking at flight radar. Flight Radar 24, and this is an older flight. This is one from yesterday. And here you can see the block that it departed from at New York, right here. So this, this little terminal building is where all the Delta flights originate from. So we are going to be in one of those stands. As for the arrival, and here's Boston, and looking at its pathway going in, it looks like it came into one of these stands right in here. So we are going to look for one of these stands. I think it's in one of the, this terminal right here is where they mainly come into, which will be a lot of fun because right here is a main highway and one here. So there's a lot of traffic that we'll be able to see in that airport scenery. All right, let's have a look at windy.com. Here's New York. The wind, it says, is blowing from 320 degrees at nine knots. 
and the visibility is 10 statute miles, clouds scattered at 1,000 feet, broken by 500. Temperature is warm, <laughs> 3 degrees, and the altimeter is 29.91. That's pretty much standard. 2.9 and 9.2 is the standard barometric pressure, so this is pretty close. And the best thing is, it's VFR. So if we're looking at a departure on the runway, then it likely would be 31 left or 31 right. Now here, this is the block where Delta goes from. And this runway right here, This is 31 left. So I'm hoping that will be the one because then it's a very short, very short taxi to get down to the active runway for a takeoff there. That would be very convenient, wouldn't it? Looking at Boston, here you can see the weather is also coming down pretty much from the north over the area. Pretty heavy over here, you can see with this green shading here. So, wind 330 degrees, 6 knots, vis visibility 5 statute miles, light rain, mist, cloud, oh my goodness me. And the altimeter is 29.84, which is a little bit lower than New York. But see this? It says it is IFR. And it has been pretty much in the IFR for the past few hours. So we may or may not get a clearance to land in Boston. We shall have to see. But we won't care because we are Ryanair 186 and resistance is useless. <laughs> and absolutely futile. <laughs> All right. If the wind is coming in from that direction, it looks like we may be coming in on this runway or on that one. That's a little short. Whichever one is active at the time that we come in is the one that we will have. All right, let's go to Simbrief and see what happens. We are Ryanair. We are 186. We're departing from KJFK. And we are going to go to KBOS. Oh, well, if things go pear-shaped, we're going to have to go back to JFK, according to this. Here's our aircraft type. There's our airframe. Right here, there's our registration. There's the cruise profile up here. It's saying the... Schedule flight time is one hour, five minutes. Yes, that's great. That is great. And it's giving us a departure of 3-1 left and 3-3 three, three left arrival. Ah, interesting. We'll leave the altitude as automatic to see what it is that they actually give us. But we are, of course, going to be full. We have lots of people that we uh, put on board because we have one ton of complimentary champagne and caviar, naturally. And there, <laughs> there is the route, exactly the way it was before. Looking down below, we're going to follow that exact same route that we saw with the flight plan that was made earlier. And that's it. So we follow it, go up to New Haven, New London, and then New Bedford. All of these new, new names. These are all names, of course, from England and into Boston. Let's go up here and we'll save the flight and generate the flight plan. Let's see what we get. Well, there's the the points and we are at flight level 250. Airtime 38 minutes, block fuel 5907. 
we go direct to merit and we take then the Robert three st uh, star coming in. No remarks. Going down, let's have a look at the information right here. Of course, is Ryanair 186. Right here is our flight level. And there's the, the route. JFK is the alternate, should things go pear-shaped. And there, of course, is our airline. We are cost index six. There's the average wind that we're going to need to put in. I'll need to make sure that we have this much fuel on board, and this is in kilograms. The reserves are here, and there's the trip and taxi right there. No tankering recommended, but if we have to go back to New York, we are carrying the fuel, so we would be technically tan uh, tankering, wouldn't we? This is the flight routing. If this is actually what we use, then this is what I will post in the description box below the video. Here's the information for flight level 200. You can see the wind is quite speedy. It's 52 knots. At 150, there's the direction and speed. And there is the direction and speed for 10,000 feet. This is the temperature at each of those levels. Not exactly what you would call warm. All right, we'll go down now and have a look at the weather. Well, this is interesting weather. This is a frontal movement right here and another frontal movement going in there, which is going to make a big mess over the eastern seaboard. My goodness me. So not exactly the best of days to be making this flight, but we'll do what we can. Here's for flight level 240, pretty much uh, closest to us. And it says we are going to have tailwinds, tailwinds going in. Well, 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 at our flight level, I like the idea of tailwinds. That does make for a short flight. And then here, here's the profile, is JFK, straight to top of climb, over to the descent. And you can see there's the arrows giving us a tailwind pretty much all the way into Boston. And up here, we are well below the troposphere. So that's not going to affect us at all. Okay. Now we've got our flight plan made, let's go on into Navigraph Charts. In Navigraph Charts, we click Flight, New Flight, From Sim Brief, and use that. We go to JFK, we open the charts list. We're going to need Airport Info and pin that to the bottom, and here's the airport. Right here is where we will be, somewhere here, and this is our runway for departure that is planned. Here's the parking gates. We are going to need to know these. We'll pin that because here's Terminal 2. Terminal 2 is where we're going to be parked at, at one of these, 64, 65 or 66, one of them anyway and we'll need to know the coordinates. Going to Boston, we'll open the charts list. We're going to need to know the airport info. That's this one, put that in there. Parking gates. We'll be making an approach on runway 33 left. So going in here, We'll go down until we get to 33 left. And here's the ILS runway 33 left for category two and three, which is us. And I'll pin that. We'll also be coming in on the 
the Roebuck 3. This is the approach into Boston, so I'll pin that. And then let's have a look at the overlay of the arrival chart. Well, if that's what it is, we may be able to just make an interesting approach onto that. So if we're coming in ILS, runway, three, three left, and we'll be coming in then from the Ben, that will be the one right there. So that will be our approach for landing if that's the one we get. All right, we have our route all made out. Okay, we're set. Let's go into the cockpit and get ourselves set up. Ah, oh, there you are. Do come on in. There's room for both of you in here. You just pick the seats that you would like and make yourself comfortable. We are here at JFK Airport. Big airport, as you know. And I know it says 22 out there. I don't know why those numbers are on the walls, but the stand is actually C63. I'm at stand C63. So that's where I'm going to be starting out from. And I've got a Delta aircraft over there and another Delta to the left. So I am bracketed by a couple of flight aircraft that we're going to be mimicking the flight. Well, all right, let's get ourselves set up, shall we? First thing we do, of course, is turn on the battery and check that we have 26 volts. Then turn on the fuel pumps and then let's start the auxiliary power unit. Now the auxiliary power unit, as you know, is in the tail of the aircraft. And in a moment, we should get some electricity generated from there that will warm us up a little bit because it's not too warm here in New York, not today. But it is plus temperatures, which is desirable to the minus temperatures that I had when I was here last week. Mm. Engine gas temperature has started to drop and st stabilize. In a moment, I'm going to see the light come on here. When that light lights up blue, I can switch. There it is. I now have 115 volts powering the cockpit. So next I need to turn on the IRS switches, the left and the right. These, of course, are the GPS or sat navs, and I have two in here redundancies just in case. Then I turn on the galley. Hopefully they'll be in there making us a cup of tea or coffee if you prefer. Emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seatbelt. Then over here I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. That's to keep these windows nice and warm. And you notice they're all very nice and clean. <laughs> and then here I'm going to turn on the probes, the left and the right, and turn on the hydraulic pumps. You notice underneath here we've got the forward service hatch and the equipment light is on because I've got the steps down and I've got the, the door open ready for our self-loading cargo to come aboard. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, turn on the recirculating fans, turn on the packs and listen to the air. There's that rush of air that's going through. Now we have some temperature 
build up in the cabin and it's good to be warm then I'm going to turn on the steady light over here and it lets the ground crew know that we're in here and we are actively doing something All right things look okay across the board now let's go in and program the FMC I'm going to check the air act make sure that it's within date and that the program is is correct go into the position put our reference in here which is KJFK to KJFK and then put that in now I'm at Charlie 63 I don't know whether or not that will come up but let's see if it does so I'm C 63 not in the database so what I have to do now is go down and then check the coordinates. So I'm at terminal 2, 63, and I should be 4038.4 and 7347.4, which is close to what we've got here. So I'll go ahead and accept that. Now the GPS is set. So now I go into the route, and of course we are KJFK in origin, and we're going to go to KBOS Boston. We are Ryanair, RYR, and we're number 186. So we'll put that in there. Go down to next page. And on this, we are direct to merit, M-E-R-I-T. And that is it. Activate, execute. Very simple, very straightforward. Go to the fix. I'm going to put K-B-O-S in this. That's our destination. I want a four mile radius. I want a 10 mile radius and a 30 mile radius. Now I'm gonna to go to descent, go to forecast and put in the information that we need now for our descent. Transition level in the United States is 180. So I'll put 180 in here and we're going to need to have the information for 200, 150 and 100. So 200, that's flight level 200, flight level 150 and flight level 100. The Q&H at our destination is 1009. 1009. And now I need to put in the information for the direction and the speed at these altitudes. So, at 200, it is 231 at 52. 231 and 52. At 15,000 feet, it is 228 at 42. 228 at 42. And at 10,000 feet, it is 240 at 18. 240 at 18. And then execute that. Go to departures. We are presuming that we're going to be on the departure that they've given us earlier, but let's see if that's what it will be. We need to now tune in to ATIS to see what the general information is and that is 128.72 Kennedy International Airport Information X-ray 1811 Zulu wind 343 at 13 visibility greater than 20 miles sky condition ceiling 5000 broken temperature 32.1 altimeter 1014 landing and departing runway 31 left and runway 31 right 
VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have X-ray. Well, we have X-ray. And it tells us that runway 31 left is in use. So let's go ahead and presume that we're going to get 31 left. We're not going to choose any of these. Apparently, it's normal standard procedure for departures to the north, Boston, where we're going, is to simply make the turn and go straight north. So we're just going to go ahead and put that in, execute that. Go to the arrivals. Now, as we looked at earlier, it was a proposal that we're coming in on 33 left ILS. So we'll put that one in. And then our we're supposed to be coming in then in on the Robert 3, which will be this one, and the transition is Benin. So we'll put all of those in and now we have the information that we need. Go to legs, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to the plan and go through each of these steps to see if we have any discontinuity. And it looks like it's going to be coming in all the way. Let's go back and do this again. I'm looking at this over here, and here's all of the, the steps, and then when I'm going to skip out the vector, I'm going to move the bend in and move it up over that in order to swing me right around onto the final. All I'm doing is I'm making a, a little bit of a shortcut. Okay. We are good. So go to plan. Now I'm going to put the weather on here. Data. I'll do the same thing with yours, but I'm going to put terrain on yours. And the data is over there. Now I'll turn the TCAS on so that aircraft knows where we are located and can avoid us. We don't want any kamikaze. Now it's time to go ahead and go and perform the initialization. Our plan fuel is our reserves are 3232 plus the trip and taxi which is 1989 and that comes to 5221 or 5.2 so I'm going to put 5.2 in there. Our reserves are 3.2, 3.2, double click this and it will calculate everything for me, putting cost index 6, our flight is 250, that's our flight altitude, the average wind on our cruise is 238 at 62, 238 at 62. Transition altitude in the United States is flight level 180, so we'll do flight 180 in there, and then execute. Go to N1 limit, there's three degrees, so we'll take that. Take off, flaps 10, Double click. Now that gives us the center of gravity and what the value should be on the trim wheel here. And then a single click on each of these gives us the values for B1 rotation and takeoff speed. Good. Now that we have that, if we're departing on runway 31 left, then it is 314 degrees on our course. So I'm going to put 314 degrees in the in the heading. I'll do it for you too, okay? 314. And now I'm going to do 
25,000 feet in our altitude here. And over here, I'm going to put 25,000 feet in our cruising altitude. This is, of course, for pressurization. Landing altitude, I'm going to leave this as zero because the elevation of the airport at Boston is 17 feet. Okay, and then the max speed for liftoff is 145. Good. Now I'm going to turn on the your damper. That light went out, so that is good. Turn on the flight director here and there. Push the L nav and V nav, and we have a good flight plan. Arm the throttle, VOR on, VOR on there. Now let's get our clearance to taxi to the active. Ground, Ryanair 186, ready to taxi north, departure with Yankee. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 31, left via taxiway, Lima Alpha Alpha Juliet Zulu, contact tower on 119.1, when ready. Taxi to and hold short runway 31, left via taxiway, Lima Alpha Alpha Juliet Zulu, Ryanair 186. Right, we have our clearance to runway 31 left. Now, when we reverse, we want to go out and put our nose to the left and our tail to the right. So, having said that, let's go ahead and do the before start. First of all, bring up the stairs and close the hatch because everything is set and ready to go. All right, the lights are off. That's good. Now, fuel is come is done. Windows locked. Seatbelt signs are on. Door lights are out. Everything is clear on that. MCP is completed. Takeoff thrust bugs is correct. CDU pre-flight is completed. Rudder airline trim is free and checked. Taxi takeoff briefing with completed. Anti-collision light is now going on. Right, I've got the charts going now so you can see it down there. You can see where we're located at Terminal 2. And we're now going to get asked for a pushback to get our nose to the left. And then we'll go on to the taxiway to find our way down to the active runway. So go menu and go here we go and push back we want to turn the standard L we want to turn our nose to the left select the tug right are you ready everybody okay in that case then I'll push down cockpit to ground go ahead we've been cleared for push and start tail to the right Ready for push tail right. Release brake, please. Parking brake is released. Attendance. Brakes released. We're moving. Which engine would you like to start today? One or two? Oh, you'd like to start engine two? All right. I'm going to switch off the uh, the packs. Brakes released. Here we go. And now I'm going to switch this one to engine number two, engine number two up here. The start valve has opened, and here you can see the N2 is building up. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. And there it is. And it's starting to catch. The engine gas temperature is building up. I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out, and it just did. We should be hearing the engine in a moment.
there it goes we the engine has ignited and looking for 115 volts up there which we have now I'm going to switch to engine number one start valve is open we're looking now for the N2 to rise Parking brake is set and it's Brakes coming set. up 22, 3 and bringing in the fuel now. We're looking for the engine gas temperature to rise, All which right, it is. is disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. This shows that we are getting an ignition. The low oil pressure light has gone out. So this is starting to climb. I'm looking on here at generator one. I'm looking for 115 volts to appear on here. I have 115 volts now. All I need now is to see the little tick mark here go out. And that will tell us that we have then stable generating power coming from both main engines. Okay, it has gone out, so now I can switch to the power coming from the main engines, turn on the heat again, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. And I'll turn on the three taxi lights, and I'm going to go to flaps 10. asking me to verify the takeoff speed which I will do made one small correction there the flaps are in transit getting a green light right we are looking good we have flaps 10 right we need to go out there and turn left and go down to the the threshold we've got a little ways to go right seats are adjusted everything is set crew we are moving Taxiway LA and then Alpha. So down here. Big airport can get lost easily here, you know. Look at the kamikazes, they're already making me a target. Get out of it. Beautiful airport scenery this, you know. This is made by Driswicky Designs very very detailed and my frame rate is in the 20s so it's not a big impact here we go this is the alpha taxiway which is the one that we take over a runway in order to get to the very end of the runway just look at the detail very impressive you know I'm just going to stop here I'm not supposed to but I will anyway and let me play tourist and give you a little video here of what this airport scenery looks like it's really very good and there's a kamikaze that's frustrated that he can't get to us ha, too bad look at the detail of New York Airport this is really 
really a, a detailed airport scenery. And the weather, this is real live weather in New York at the moment, which is a lot better than the weather I had last week when I was here. Beautiful scenery. All right, we'll continue now. There's quite a bit of other artificial intelligent aircraft up here too. all the way down the Alpha taxiway until we get to the crossover at Juliet and then continue down there until we get to Zulu and then we turn right on Zulu to get to the threshold. Look at the detail, isn't that really something? There's the runway ahead that we have to cross over. Yes, this is decent weather. We may get a good, good view of the New York skyline as we uh, swing around and go to the north. Now, nominally, I would be required to halt at the whole short lines here until I get a clearance from the tower to cross. But since we've been given clearance in advance, and I don't see anything, I'm going to go ahead and cross here at Juliet. Everything looks good, no aircraft coming. I think that we're safe. And we're paralleling the runway that we will be using to take off, which is just down here. Now we need to go all the way to Zulu. So just keep going straight. time isn't bad. We are about 10 minutes on our taxi time here. All right, and this is Zulu, so stick my hand out. We're going to turn right. I'm going to go up to the whole short line and then contact the tower to get our clearance to take off. And there we go. Hold right here. All right. Radio to one three one left departure to the north. Radio one eight six 
Proceed to take off one way, three one left. Approved, departure to the north. Cleared for takeoff, runway 31 left, Ryanair 186. Right, we are ready. Recall, check, flight controls, check, flaps, green light, stabilize, trim, correct, auto brake, RTO, speed brake lever down, D10, ground, weapon is clear, takeoff briefing is completed, lights are on, engines continuous, and going to strobe, light on that. And we are ready now to move into the taxiway. I am starting the clock. Right, we are clear to take off and I can see New York at the end of the runway there. All right, make our turn and line up okay we are lined up and ready do you see New York in the distance there all right advanced power to M1 power is stable toga button push and full power and we are rolling
going to be very long before we're on our approach. And uh, But I'll make sure that I give you a shout when we're there, all right? See you in just a few minutes.
except at Woba. So I'm going to put Woba in here.
video of that before it disappears. There's Boston and there's the airport. Look at that. Well, let's see if we can get ourselves a clearance again. Traffic 
APU is started. Turn these switches off. Cleaning up. And everything is looking good. We made actually a fairly good landing there, considering that we had to avoid another aircraft, which I couldn't see, but it said dive, so I died. And then from that point on, it was manual all the way in. So that's where I'm at. I need to go down here, down Delta. Okay. I think I know where we need to go. We have to go to... We are going to need to go to main terminal and to one of the stands 6, 7, 8 or 9, whichever is available. So, to do that, we need to go across Delta and then that way. Okay, we can do that. All right, let's get a little juice hit, get ourselves moving again. All we're going to do now is find the, uh, the terminal.
right, I'm shutting off the tower because you know it's not going to do any good for us. So we go up here and it bends slightly to the right and it's in that section there. terminal look at the roads but traffic all over them I think that's the motorway there and here is the Hyatt hotel we'll stay there what do you think that we'll we'll just book ourselves in there and stay there tonight and have a party is that a good idea I think so we'll charge it to Mr. O'Leary how's that there we go swinging around This is a lovely airport. This is by Fly Tampa, you know. Fly Tampa designed this. It is really good. And my frame rate is not bad either. I'm 18, 19. With all of this weather from Active Sky, I'm still doing very, very well. Now, where is number five or six? Ah, there's A6 over there. We'll go into A6. Or maybe we can swing around and choose one of the others that's closer to the road. What do you think? All right. Good idea. Well, we're still following the taxiway, so we're doing fine. And up there next to the motorway or freeway as they call it in America okay and this one is number five all right we'll pull in to a4 this is the one this is a4 right here so make the turn. And coming up. And park. Parking brake is on. Engines are off, lights are off, and switching everything off now. Galley exit lights, seat belts are off, and the hatch is already open. Decas is now off. Everything is shut down. Nominal. Our passengers are already getting off. <laughs> they probably wouldn't want to, I think. All right. Turn off the fuel. Turn off the APU. And turn off the battery. And everything is shut down, is complete. Well, what did you think of that? I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that we would be facing IFR. Well, sort of, because it did say it was going to be IFR. But it was, uh, had to do a little bit of a quick shuffle to get the new charts in. And basically just fly it in by hand. Well, that's what old bold pilots do, you know. At least I got to fly the aeroplane and not let the aeroplane fly me. I, anyway, that's just, that's just me. So we made a visual flying and landing 
as best we could. We could see the runway, we could see the airport, so it really wasn't a dangerous maneuver. It was just <clears throat> without proper permission. <laughs> but then again, we are Ryanair 186. Resistance is futile. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the flight. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you for making the recommendations for this particular flight to both of you. Thank you. And for everyone else, I will see you again next week on a Ryanair 186 flight. Bye, everybody.